The Nether, the final frontier. You already did this intro, you lazy hack. Fear <laughs> Mojang. Hi, it's me, Austin. Since I've been locked in my apartment for two months now and run out of wall space to scribble my inane ramblings and I can't go outside for any extended period of time, I am here, trapped. So I've decided in order to slow the onset of the inevitably encroaching insanity, I'd simulate what it feels like to have the wind in my hair and the sun on my face by playing Minecraft. And hey, you know, did you know there's a big new update to the game that overhauls the nether? It's kinda, kinda great. The pigmen have little pig faces and there's a whole new material, netherite, that, get this, does not burn up in lava. In fact, it floats in lava. And I bet, I bet you're waiting. <laughs> I bet you're waiting for me to say that it makes no sense, right? That netherite is stupid and you've all strapped yourselves in for crazy Austin. Well, you're wrong! You're a fool, Harry Potter, and you will lose everything. <laughs> No! Netherite makes perfect sense. It's got a high melting point and a high flash point. Checkmate! But you know what it made me realize? It's the lava. The lava! The lava in Minecraft makes no freaking sense! <sighs> okay. Gotta calm down and remind myself that none of this actually matters. Uh, probably doesn't matter. Listen, if I stopped disproportionately caring about things that didn't matter, would I even be me? No! No, I would not! Anyway, today we're talking about one of Minecraft's OG villains, right up there with Creepers and Fire. And unlike Fire, which was nerfed severely in 2011, and Creepers, which have never been nerfed but have the benefit of being stopped by simple doors, Lava remains one of the most terrifying foes you can face in the entirety of the game. Capable of spawning anywhere, replacing air blocks once you reach the lowest points of the regular overworld, and able to burn almost any item in the game to ashes, this makes accidentally stumbling into lava one of the most rage quit inducing things that can happen to you as a player. And the lava does not give a crap about you or your feelings. Fall into a puddle of lava with fully enchanted diamond armor that you spent hours creating tough nuggets. They're gone now, son. Lava is such a defining force in Minecraft that it influences at least three of the core Minecraft rules for play. Rule one, don't dig straight down. Rule two, don't dig straight up. Rule three, always carry a bucket of water. Don't dig straight down because you can drop into lava. Don't dig straight up because lava and sand and gravel and creepers might drop onto you. Carry a bucket of water because it can help you deal with, guess what? Lava. It's also implicitly why you're only supposed to dig down to layer 12 or so when you're doing strip mining. Lava is a cornerstone of Minecraft and defines at least like a quarter of what you're gonna do in the game one way or another. It can be used for infinite stone generators, it's needed to make obsidian in order to travel to the nether, it's the key ingredient in garbage disposal, and of course it is a major component in lava moats. So what's wrong with this stuff? Everything! Absolutely everything! <laughs> Let's start with the basics, because honestly, lava does seem at a glance to be the type of thing that is an unstoppable force of destruction, but it really is not. Lava is a magma that has been expelled from beneath the surface of the planet. Magma is molten rock. How did it get molten? That's a good question, actually. I have no idea. I think a long time ago, someone started a fire and accidentally dropped it into the Grand Canyon, and that's, um, what's that? Oh. Oh, that, that's not, it. we're not, we're not allowed to... I'm not allowed to lie in the show. Okay, fine. There's actually a lot of things that cause rock beneath the surface of the earth to melt. It can be melted by the incredible pressures and friction that happen where two tectonic plates run into each other. Tectonic plates are basically these large slabs of earth that make up the crust that we live on, and they're constantly moving, albeit very slowly. Given the extreme pressures and forces involved, they can easily create enough heat energy where they collide or split to melt rock. In any case, this stuff is hot. 
hot. Super hot. Anywhere from 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius, depending upon how long it's been above the surface and its composite materials. It's hot enough, in fact, believe it or not, to actually, for realsies, set diamonds on fire. The flash point of diamonds in an oxygen-rich atmosphere like ours on Earth is about 900 degrees Celsius, which is well within the range of your average flow of lava. Diamond is, after all, not that different from charcoal you might use in your grill. It's made out of the same stuff, carbon. It's just arranged in a different structure. And like charcoal, when you set it on fire, even with a much cooler heat source, it releases the energy stored in its carbon bonds. As the carbon from the diamond bonds with oxygen to release CO2, a burning diamond that originally was just 900 degrees can shoot up to over 1900 degrees Celsius. <laughs> doggy. So surprisingly, this incredibly resilient real life material would realistically burn into nothingness if you dropped it into lava. And what's even cooler is that we can judge based on the color of the light the lava gives off what temperature it is. Using thermodynamic spectrometry, a fancy way of saying looking at the color of something, we can measure with a fair degree of accuracy how hot it is. This is because objects, all objects in fact, give off light if they have any heat at all in the form of thermal radiation. Even you give off light. It's just a very low wavelength because you're like 36 degrees Celsius and not 900 degrees Celsius. The light humans and other animals give off is very low energy and in the form of infrared radiation. Therefore, we can't really see it with our naked eye. Really hot stuff, however, gives off radiation within a spectrum that we can see. Think of glowing hot swords in movies, the sun, or, you know, lava. Based on the color average of lava blocks in Minecraft, it's blazing at the high end for lava at about 1100 to 1200 degrees. Nice. So it's definitely hot enough to burn diamonds. Amazing. And what's even cooler, or uh, hotter, is that the lava in Minecraft flows quite a bit more slowly than water does, just like real lava. The flow rate of lava in real life can vary quite a bit, but if on the surface of the planet it can flow as slow as less than a single kilometer per hour to up to 10 kilometers per hour, depending upon what rock it's made out of, how hot it is, the slope it's on, etc, etc, etc. Minecraft lava in the overworld flows at a rate of 2.4 kilometers per hour, given that each block it travels is exactly one meter, and it takes exactly three seconds to the frame to travel two meters. It flows even faster in the nether, which is actually pretty awesome since it's supposed to be hotter there, reaching a top speed of 7.2 kilometers per hour, near the upper end of ordinary no frills lava. That's neat. So what's my problem with all the lava in Minecraft if it's supposedly so realistic? Oh, I don't know. How about literally everything else? Everything! you can carry lava around in a bucket, which is fine because the melting point of iron is well over 1500 degrees Celsius, way above what is typical for lava, you'd probably burn the crap out of your hand, but sure, who gives a crap? But then, if you throw that same, that very same bucket into the lava, poof, it's gone. Like the Joker making a pencil disappear, except like, how? How? How is this bucket that can hold lava somehow burning up two seconds later when I drop it in lava? I mean, sure. We have netherite now, a material, the only material in fact, that not only doesn't burn up in lava, but floats. That is nonsense. Here is a list of all things in Minecraft that should be able to survive lava in the game. Granite, melting temp of 1215 to 1260 degrees Celsius. Glass, melting temp of 1400 degrees. Iron, 1500 degrees. Sand, 1700 degrees. More probably than that, but I realized just how many materials and minerals are in Minecraft and I got bored. Point is, a lot of the materials you use in Minecraft every day wouldn't even deform under the heat of lava, let alone melt, let alone be completely and utterly destroyed, and there's no way lava is any hotter than 1200 degrees, period. So far from being special, huge chunks of the game should be totally immune to lava alongside netherite. Hilariously enough, I looked up the flash point of dirt and it's well below the heat generated by lava. So all those dirt blocks that are able to hold the lava at bay should be
be toast. But I'm not done yet, not by a long shot. You ever find yourself trying to play through a hardcore challenge of Minecraft, the one with permadeath, and you're creeping through the nether, doing your best not to do anything too dangerous, and then bam, one of those stupid, um, what are they called, gas shows up, and it's just like fireballs you into a lava pit, and you just go full golem? Like, bam, your last vision as you sink to your doom is just orange, a sea of orange. This is completely unrealistic. Lava isn't made out of water. It's not like oil, alcohol, or all the other ordinary terrestrial liquids. This stuff is dense. How dense? 3,100 kilograms per cubic meter. So even though it's super hot, which would make all of its component materials less dense than they would be if fully cooled and crystallized because all the particles in it are having a wild party due to being filled with a ton of heat energy and can't stick as close together. This is still super, super dense. This is dense enough for granite, which is about 2,750 kilograms per cubic meter to float in. Steel would sink, but you? A fleshy pile that is basically just water? Not a chance! The average human meat sack of water and some other bits holding them together is only on average 985 kilograms per cubic meter, meaning that your fiery death by lava would look a lot less like the Terminator and a lot more like just, like just burning to death horribly painfully. In theory, this means you should technically be able to construct a freaking boat out of granite that lets you sail across the lava in the game. I mean, you'd probably still burn to death because all of the severe radiant heat, but you'd look amazing doing it. Netherite is not special. Stuff that should be floating and doesn't burn or melt in lava is all over the freaking place. Why does it get a pass? And that's it. That's my whole beef. Lava makes no freaking sense. It's just some, like, hot, dangerous water that flows slowly and destroys your stuff for no reason. I hate it! And no, I didn't make this video because I lost a hardcore playthrough because I got cocky and started digging straight down only to find myself in a pit of lava and have a grudge against the game for killing me even though what I did was entirely my fault and want to be able to float on lava so I can more easily get away and I want my stuff to survive if I accidentally drop it and it's just, that's just ridiculous. Although, come to think of it, Minecraft is generally all over the map when it comes to heat. You're able to make glass out of sand that you just, like, put in your oven for a little bit. It could be that I'm entirely overthinking this. Oh well, too late, made the episode already. Bye! Sincerely, Austin.